In an earlier lesson, I described the use of multi-key fields and showed you how you can set up a relationship between two text fields, then enter more than one value separated by carriage returns on either or both sides of the relationship to have a relationship match on more than one value simultaneously. Doing this allows you to expand or extend the scope of the relationship match criteria, letting you set up a list of values to match on and it's one way that you can set up a one-to-many or many-to-many -many join. Let's take a look at how the relationship I set up previously in the work file can be used along with FileMaker's multi-key capabilities to work as a many-to-many -many join between records in the parent table and corresponding records in the child table. Pursuing the analogy of parent-child relationships, of course it's possible for a parent to have multiple children, and each child can be expected to have two biological parents. So it would be useful if we could have the data connections reflect those kinds of associations. In this copy of the work file, the relationship between the parent and child table is set up as an equijoin here between the parent ID in the parent table and the parent ID field, which is the foreign key in the child table. Clearly, a given parent ID can be entered into the parent ID field on more than one child record, establishing a join from one parent record to several child records. And that's what we're seeing here, over in the parent table, from the first record in the table, into which I've entered the name George. The portal shows that George, as the parent record, is related to Simon, Josie and Kelly, all three records in the child table at present. That relationship is formed by the parent ID, P001, being placed in the corresponding parent ID field on each child record. So that's what we can call a one-to-many join configuration, one parent related to many children. Back on the parent layout, you can see that I've added several additional records, one holding the name Maida and another holding the name Veronique. From the child table, if I now enter a carriage return in the parent ID field and add another parent ID, say P003 on Kelly's record, when I press enter, you can see in the additional portal showing related parent records, there are now two related parent records for Kelly's child record. Similarly, if I add the ID P002 to the record for Josie, George and Major are now appearing as the parents for Josie, and similarly for Simon. So now each child record is related to two parent records, and each parent record is related to one or more children. However, even though it's great to have the option to use multi-key fields in this kind of way, in some cases they may not be the best option. Sometimes you want to create one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationships in a different and perhaps more conventional way. The classic way to manage a relationship to many records in another table is to use a third intermediary table called a join table. I mentioned this and used a couple of join tables in examples in earlier chapters, but here we're specifically reviewing relationship techniques, so I'd like to recap and talk a little about exactly how join tables work and when you would want to use them. First of all, a join table provides the intermediary connection point between two existing tables. So we'd need an additional table in this file in order to use a join table to connect the parent records with the child records. I'm going to modify the file to create the same many-to-many -many relationships using a join table instead of a multi-key field. So to do that, first of all, I'll create a table called parent child join, abbreviated like so. I'll double click on the new table and add a couple of fields. First of all, a join ID field, which I'll set up to acquire a serial number starting with J001. Next, the join table will need to store an ID to indicate which parent record it's creating a join to, so we need a parent ID field. And to connect a parent to a particular child record, we need a child ID field. Now we have the basics that are required to make the relationship work via the join table. So I'll bring the join table down here and position it between the parent and child tables. I'll select the relationship that currently exists between the two tables, delete it, and create a new relationship that joins the parent ID in the parent table with the parent ID in the join table, 
and then joins the child ID in the join table to the child ID in the child table. So now we have the potential to have an interconnecting record in the join table that tracks the association between each parent and each corresponding child record. Now, as soon as I leave the dialog, you'll see that the relationship is no longer working because there are presently no records in the join table. I'll request a new window, go to the layout that FileMaker has added for me showing the join table. I'll reform this layout so that we can view the join table as a list, just positioning these fields horizontally so that we can view them in a standard list format. And I'll shrink the height of the body part like so. Move the fields up a little. And now in browse mode, I can begin adding some records. So for the first record, I need to connect the record for George, so P001 will be the parent ID, with Simon. C001 is the corresponding child ID. Now with that one record in place in the join table, you can see that we've established the connection between George and Simon. If I create a new record, which I'll do by duplicating the existing record, and add C002, George is now connected also to Josie. And the same to create a connection to Kelly. Next, I need to create the required connections to join each of the other parent records to the existing child records to establish the joins that will work in both directions between the two tables. So now I'll create a join between the record for Maida and the record for Simon. And a connection between the records for Maida and Josie. And last, a record to connect Veronique's record in the parent table with the record for Kelly. So now the join table has a record representing each of the relationships that were previously being created via the use of multi-key fields. In my original window, you can now see that George has three children, Maida shows two children, Veronique shows one, and from the child table, although the parent ID field is now being ignored, it's not forming part of the relationship at all, we nevertheless have, via the use of the join table, relationships to the two parents for each child record. One of the chief advantages that a join table has over a relationship that uses multi-key fields on one or both sides of the join is that with a join table, you have the option to include additional fields to track other characteristics that are particular to the join between any two given records. So for example, we could add a field to the join table that indicates the nature of the relationship between each child and the two parent records for that child record. Let me demonstrate. In the join table, I'll add a field called relationship. And here on the join table layout, I'll also add the relationship field so we can enter data into it. I should also make these field headings a different color so they're easier to see. Now for the first three records, I'll enter father to indicate that the record for George is related as the father record to each of the three child records. And similarly, I'll enter mother into records four to six. Now, in the portal on the child record, it's possible for me to add a second field chosen from the join table to indicate the relationship. And at this point, to make the portal work correctly, I'll base it on the join table rather than on the parent table as it has been previously. At this point, the portal now shows not only the name of each of the related parent records, but the relationship to the child record. There are many cases where some of the data that you'll need to store really pertains to the relationship rather than to the entities on either end of the relationship. Among other things, you may wish to use a field in the join table to track the status of the association. So for example, you may keep records for past associations with a status of expired or inactive. In that way, using a join table gives you a lot of flexibility and enables your data to more accurately capture the actual nature of the relationships in play.